everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's the first time I said anything out loud today. Welcome to episode two of Tea with Lily, the show where I have my tea in the morning with you guys and share about autism and chronic illness and all the stuff that is part of my life. Uh, today I am thinking about vocal stimming. Um, basically what vocal stimming is um, well, let me start over. If you don't know what stimming is, um, stimming is short for self-stimulatory behaviors, which are what um, the repetitive movements that autistic people do to regulate their nervous systems. That's what stimming is. I do a lot of finger stuff. I rock a lot. Um, that sort of thing. If you watch my videos, you'll see me do a lot of stimming. I stim a lot. It's kind of my thing. Um, vocal stimming is stimming with your voice. Um, it's basically just making noises, but they're not um, pointless noises. Uh, they are um, expressive noises, they are sensory noises to deal with an environment. Something that I do a lot, that I notice that I do, and I've also noticed other autistic people do, is um, as a response to maybe an uncomfortable sound, or a sound that's too loud. Um, I gotta get my hair out of my face here, you guys can see me here. A response that's too loud, um, I mean, a start over. A sound that's too loud, um, creating noise that is a positive sensory input to try to drown that out. Um, for example, say, uh, we, uh, let's see, okay, so I live in Kansas and we have tornado siren drills, um, during the season where tornadoes might happen, I guess, or something like that. And they test them at noon. Um, I don't know if it's every day or not. Sometimes it's every day. But I've lived here long enough that I've gotten so, I've, I've tuned it out, like, consciously, but it still affects me sensory-wise. So when they go off, I don't always, I mean, most of the time, I don't notice consciously that it's something that bothers me. Um, until I start vocal stimming, I'll start making noise as a way to counteract that uncomfortable auditory input. Um, vocal stimming for me is extremely valuable because it's very, very raw expression and it's very reliable for me for telling where I'm at. Um, I'm very, uh, still learning how to read my stims and how to read my body and, uh, tell what my nervous system needs. I don't always know, I can't always catch when, you know, a sensory environment is bothering me. Um, so that's a crash course on what vocal stimming is, is sometimes it's, it's uh, to deal with a sensory input, or um, it's just plain expressive. When I get really, really happy and excited, I make like happy squealy noises. I make noises when I get excited. Um, that is also vocal stimming, it's an expressive uh, utterance. It's not words, always. It's just noise. Um, vocal stimming for me has been a very interesting growth situation, because throughout my journey over the last two years, um, choosing not to pass as neurotypical around front of, around people anymore, letting myself stim and take care of my body, um, as my nervous system got more fragile and I needed to do that more, and I couldn't handle most sensory environments that weren't my bedroom without stimming. So it's been a journey of coming to that self-acceptance, coming to a place where I don't feel shame for the way that I need to move my body, um, even though it looks weird to people. Um, that all said, as I've come to a place of like pretty solid acceptance of needing to stim, needing to move the way I move, the one thing that has always kind of eluded me in that area is vocal stimming. Because for me, I am like abundantly aware of how it's being perceived by people, that it, um, I don't know how to put this, I want to put this, like, delicately and correctly. It makes, I, 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 I perceive other people perceiving me as l less intelligent than I am. Um, it is something that presents very, uh, that way. Um, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to be gingerly about how I'm expressing this the way it makes me feel. Um, 
because it's a personal thing. I'm not, I'm absolutely not, disclaimer, like seriously, I'm not making a commentary on other autistic people who vocal stim. I think vocal stimming is awesome because of what it is for me. It's very valuable. It's very powerful for knowing what's going on, and that is a big deal for me. So vocal stimming is something that's harder to come to acceptance because being autistic and all my life battling these preconceptions and misconceptions about what it means to be autistic and what that means for me as like a human being in my whole life, um, I've fought misconceptions like that and for me I feel it's taken a while to come to a place where I don't feel like I'm betraying myself when I'm stimming and when I'm vocal stimming because I know that that presents in a way that's going to make people perceive me differently than I would like to be perceived. Uh, you know, and so it's been a journey of coming to terms with the fact that I can't control other people's perceptions of me. Um, I can only offer the information and, and hope that they're receptive, that sort of thing. Um, so vocal stimming for me, it's been difficult um, because it is, it, is a little, it is a little embarrassing for me to like, because it's involuntary, it's very involuntary. Um, I can't help when these noises escape my mouth and they're not bad. Um, you know, I, I don't want to feel bad about them or suppress them. But, so it's this whole big thing. There's this stigma, there's this sort of dichotomy, kind of cognitive dissonant thing where vocal stimming has kind of been classically perceived as something that only lower functioning autistic people do. As much as I hate functioning labels to express my point, um, it's perceived as something that lower uh, functioning autistic people do and being of higher intelligence you know that's not that's not an accurate statement for me vocal standing for me is not representative of a lower functioning brain and it's not that way with everybody you know autism is complicated brains are complicated um but um so, so i'm not saying that vocal stimming means lower functioning. Um, so forgive me if I'm coming across not so great. I'm um, just expressing my journey through coming to acceptance, to coming to acceptance with my vocal stimming as an adult. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's an, it's an adventure because so much of my vocal stimming is so involuntary that it startles people. You know, I'll be having a conversation with someone and I'll get excited or I'll get really happy or like I will start vocal stimming and people kind of, if they don't know me well, they're, you know, what, are, are you okay? You know, wondering that something's wrong and sometimes it is something's wrong, but I wouldn't know if I didn't vocal stim. I do a lot of um, deep like throat, like, uh, like stuff like that when I'm uncomfortable, when there's no, too much noise, I start automatically doing that sort of really intense frequency of, of, of vibration in my throat and my chest to get that loud sensory input to block out negative sensory input noise. So I do that, and it, so uh, sometimes it is bad. It is a symptom of that I'm uncomfortable in some sort of way, but a lot of times it's not. A lot of times it's like squealy, high-pitched, like, not not annoyingly, but like, really excited, like, happy, squealy noises, you know, like children do. It's it's very child, like, it's very, you know, it's very innocent, I feel, uh, because it's it's vulnerable, it's, it's involuntary, and I'm letting these uh, noises escape, you know, that are expressive, and they're expressing the people that I'm with. Uh, what I'm experiencing and what I'm feeling and I think that's really cool I think that's really beautiful to be able to interact with my world and the people in it and, and to be able to express in that way because growing up autistic having such difficulty with verbal expression and body language not being able to get myself across the way that I want to and being misunderstood in that sort of way it's very freeing to, to, to let myself stim vocally and, and have my expressive sounds that, I, I mean, to this day when people are around me, they maybe don't know me well, they don't know how to read my stimming, but I'll vocal stim and uh, it's apparent, it's apparent to other people whether I'm happy or uncomfortable. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to tell when 
the sounds that I'm making are good sounds, you know, responses to good things or responses to bad things. And that's really freeing for me, you know, living a life where I wasn't always um, heard and that sort of thing. And not just by other people, but by myself, you know. I never knew what was going on. So, so I know this got really personal, but like vocal stimming um, is, is really, it's really uh, important. Uh, if you have an autistic family member who does a lot of vocal stimming, um, learn to read it because it is, you know, it is readable. It is a language. It's a language of expression. And I think you'd be surprised at how how much can be communicated just through sound. Um, if you, you know, if you yourself find that you are inclined to have vocal stims but you're embarrassed, um, speaking from someone who's in that place, coming to terms with it, letting myself do that in front of people and not feeling ashamed, um, it's a process. Have patience and grace for yourself. Um, but, but ultimately, understand that what's important is taking care of yourself. So if you need a vocal stem to deal with the environment, you should do that. Because your brain is important and precious and needs to be taken care of. Um, on the other end, if you find that you make a lot of expressive noises that you're like, uh, you know, not sure about, um, you know, don't be not sure about it. I think the world deserves to hear everybody's expression um, of, of happiness and joy, because for me, vocal stimming is a lot of happy noises. <clears throat> but you'll see too, you'll see, I do cover my mouth a lot, and it was only until recently that, I mean recently I realized that that's an instinctive response to stop myself from vocal stimming. Um, so I'm still working through that, but you'll see me cover my mouth a lot if you hang out with me. I think my finger flicking in front of my mouth is more sensory because your lips are really sensitive and I'm very tactile sensory seeking so it's getting that extra input. Um, but when I do, I'll have to put my tea down and show you one of the one of the suppressing my vocal stim stims that I do. Did that make sense? The way I suppress my vocal stimming while well, stimming is um, I do my pressure stim a lot and I'll have it in front of my mouth and I do that a lot in front of my in front of my mouth like this, um, like trying to stop myself from vocal stimming. So yeah, so those are the things <laughs> um, that I do. I do that a lot. I'm trying to train myself out of it, but it is really instinctual. It's really second nature to try to stop myself from doing that because I've been suppressing all my life and that kind of thing, and it's still new to me to have these involuntary vocal responses to things. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's vocal stimming for you. There's not a whole lot to say about it. I really was just expressing my thoughts on what I'm dealing with coming to terms with that. Um, you know, if you hang out with me and, you know, see that I'm like su trying to suppress my vocal stimming, I've had people notice that I'm, you know, people who know me really, really well hanging out and I'm suppressing, I'm trying to like, you know, and, and they, they recognize um, that I'm getting tense because I'm not stimming the way that I'd like to. It gets, there's tension in my body when I can't do that. And then I start ticking because the tension just is like, fine, fine, I'll just do what I, you know, my body kind of rebels if I don't stim when I need to and I start ticking worse. Uh, but people, I've, I've really appreciated when people have noticed that I'm struggling and I'm feeling uncomfortable being myself and uh, expressing to me like it's okay like I'm not bothered by it I'm used to you doing all your weird autism things like you know so if you know someone um, with autism or if you have a friend who maybe is going through the same journey of getting to a place where they're comfortable stimming encourage them let them know and even if they haven't expressed that they're embarrassed about it um, or whatever like encouragement and 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 letting people with autism know that they are accepted um, is powerful because that's something we deal with is this lack of acceptance 
especially those of us who do stim more and do have more apparent traits, um, you know, all of you non-autistic people out there, you have quite a mantle on your shoulders to be able to bring a lot of healing to the autistic community um, by expressing that acceptance, by letting us know, by making it known in general that, hey, you know, you don't care if I flap my hands when I'm talking to you. Like, if that makes sense, I'm not, you know, I'm not speaking super specifically, but... Yeah, um, definitely, you know, if that's something that you want to, you want to partner with the autistic community, acceptance is a huge thing, especially acceptance of stimming and autistic traits and things that are perceived as not normal, opening the door and letting um, letting it be known that those things are okay in your world, you know, in your neurotypical non-autistic world. Hey, you know, this is good. It's all good. You know, that just that feeling of acceptance is really powerful. Um, just considering how many autistic people grew up being bullied, grew up being outcasts, and not understanding why they were different. My story. Um, you know, you have a lot of power to change um, change the landscape of how that's perceived by changing how you perceive it, by changing how you accept it. Um, one person at a time, the world can become more accepting of things that have not been perceived as normal things to do, such as stimming and flapping and vocal stimming and la la la, everything. So that's just a quick encouragement um, to all you guys explaining, and just for myself personally, I know I have people in my personal life who watch these videos and um, sort of a preemptive strike on my part to explain what's happening when I do vocal stimming so that I'm not scaring people or freaking people out and interrupting the normal flow of conversation to explain what's happening. Vocal stimming is a thing that happens and uh, it's something that I do as an autistic adult. Um, my last point here. Oh gosh, sorry guys. My legs were falling asleep. My last point here is to say that just because someone, an autistic person, stims more, don't presume that means incompetence. Don't presume that means intellectual disability. Uh, stimming is neurological. Autism is neurological. That's a physiological thing happening in our bodies and not an issue so much. And I say issue like a brokenness in our brain. It's not the case. Um, we just perceive the world differently, so we have to process it differently. And sometimes that looks like hand clapping and vocal stimming and rocking back and forth and being really, really strange, but that's what we need. Sorry guys, got interrupted. Um, yeah, uh, so all that to say, um, stimming is a good thing, and um, yeah, acceptance is a big deal. Stimming acceptance is a big deal. It's a big deal to me. It's kind of one of my biggest passions is advocating for stimming acceptance. Um, so that's all I've got for you today. Um, stay tuned for future Tea with Lily episodes. If you have a topic you'd like me to talk about, if you have any tea recommendations, um, let me know in the comments. Subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of the fun. And... That's all. Until next time, my friends, stay classy, stim freely, and I will see you again soon.